Leah here from LeahFirstSight.com. In this video, we'll discuss the what and how behind the alkene reaction mechanisms. Before we can understand the specific alkene reactions, we have to understand what is an alkene, how does it look, how does it act, and why does it want to react. An alkene is simply a hydrocarbon or a molecule that has a carbon-to-carbon -carbon double bond. The double bond is sp2 hybridized, which makes the molecule trigonal planar and gives the atoms a bond angle of 120 degrees. Let's take a look at a sample molecule where I have carbon double bound to carbon and we'll just add little green lines to represent hydrogen. If I draw this molecule from the side, I start off with my sigma bonds, which is carbon single bound to the carbon and single bound to each of the two hydrogens. Three sigma bonds is where I get sp2 hybridization. If you're unfamiliar, please go back and look at my hybridization tutorial video because this is important to understand the alkene reactions. In addition to the sp2 hybrid orbitals, I also have a p orbital which sits half on top and half on bottom of the carbon atom. And if I have these two p orbitals next to each other, the electrons in them will overlap on top for the pi top and then on bottom for the pi bottom. And this is what makes the pi bond or the carbon to carbon double bond. Imagine that this is a sideways image where the hydrogens and the carbons are in the plane. Notice how the pi electrons sitting above and below the flat or trigonal planar molecule. This makes it a lot easier for these electrons to interact with other molecules and therefore start the alkene reactions. Another important concept to understand for alkene reactions is the definition of a nucleophile and an electrophile. And I'm sure you will see these again and again, but some students memorize them and don't know how to apply it to reactions. If I look at the word nucleophile, I can see that it comes from the words nucleus loving, which in chemistry translates to positive seeking. The same thing for electrophile coming from the words electron loving, which translates to negative seeking. In my videos, I will be representing the nucleophile by the letters NU with a pair of electrons to show that these are electron rich and therefore positive seeking. And I will represent electrophile with E plus to show that this is positive rich or partially positive and therefore negative seeking. And this leads me to the founding principle of organic chemistry mechanisms. Most of the mechanisms that you will see in organic chemistry will start out with some nucleophile and some electrophile. The nucleophile being electron rich looks for the partially positive or positive electrophile and attacks. This then leads to a product of a nucleophile bound to an electrophile. If you look at every reaction as what is the nucleophile, what is the electrophile? What makes this molecule a nucleophile? What makes the electrons want to attack? With the electrophile, what makes it partially positive? Why does it attract and attack? When the nucleophile attacks the electrophile, what does the product look like? What are the charges look like? If you can apply these questions or these concepts to every reaction, it will be more about understanding and applying concepts, less about memorization, and you will find that you understand what's going on a lot better. Let's apply this to a hypothetical mechanism. I will start with a 2-butene with a pi bond between carbon 2 and carbon 3. I will not show stereochemistry in this molecule because I want to focus on the concept. The pi electrons in the carbon-to-carbon -carbon double bond are electron rich and that makes the alkene a nucleophilic molecule. If I bring any random electrophile near this nucleophile, the pi electrons will reach out to grab the electrophile, breaking the carbon to carbon double bond in the process. Always show the reaction arrow as starting from the lone pair of electrons, reaching out towards the electrophile or towards the positive molecule getting attacked. Never, ever, ever 
start the arrow from the positive atom. These atoms get attacked, but they do not have electrons to provide for the attack. Once you have shown the electrons and how they move, you show a reaction arrow and then draw out your product. The carbon skeleton for butene, now butane, has not changed. Recall that I had a pi electron on both carbon-2 and carbon-3. Since this is a symmetrical starting molecule, it doesn't matter if I put the electrophile on carbon-2 and 3. If, however, you're dealing with a primary, secondary, or tertiary carbon, where you place the electrophile will make a difference, but we'll look at these in specific reactions in later videos. For now, I will randomly choose to show that the electrophile connected on the right, and the bond connecting the electrophile is made out of the two electrons that did the attacking. Now here is the key concept to pay attention to. Carbon-2 had a double bond, now it has the electrophile attacked. It had four bonds in butene, now it has four bonds as well. Don't forget that there's that invisible hydrogen. Carbon-3, however, having had just one hydrogen, now has only three bonds, and this gives it a formal charge of positive one. You can verify the formal charge by taking a quick count of the electrons and applying the formal charge formula, or you can try to understand what happened. We started with a double bond on the carbon. The electrons from the double bond moved to the electrophile, leaving this carbon with nothing. The carbon being deficient now has a positive charge, which means it's waiting for something else to come and fill in those electrons. If you're not too comfortable with this concept, check out my carbocation video and hopefully that will make it clear to you. This reaction step left me with a carbocation intermediate. So now I can reanalyze what is my nucleophile and what is my electrophile. Given that my carbocation has a positive charge, this becomes the electrophile of the next reaction step, and any random nucleophile in solution will now react to continue the sequence or the mechanism of this reaction. Once again, the electrons on the nucleophile will reach out to attack the positive carbon, giving me the final product in this mechanism. I haven't accounted for the change in charge of nucleophile and electrophile because that will depend on the specific molecules or atoms in question. The purpose of this video is to give you a solid understanding of what an alkene is and how an alkene reacts. In future videos of the alkene reaction series, I will take you through the different reactions one at a time to show you how the molecules react how the alkenes interact, and how you can figure out the product even if you haven't seen that reaction previously. I will be happy to answer any additional mechanism questions in my weekly review sessions, live, online, and from the comfort of your home. I also offer one-on-one -on -one private tutoring. Visit my website for more information. Leafirstside.com slash organic chemistry.